Hi there. I've been interested in trying uh, to use mocap uh, in my workflow with animation, but I haven't really wanted to invest in any hardware like a Kinect or any other sort of mocap hardware. Now Blender's tracking system has just been improving every single release for a while now, and it seemed to me that it's only got one small missing piece if you want to use Blender as an optical mocap uh, tracking device. So it seems that um, you should be able to set up two or more cameras and track markers on a mocap actor and um, then if you insert into your 3D workspace the two cameras, uh, two virtual cameras with the exact same positions and rotations as the real cameras you should be able to project um, from camera one through the tracking marker out into your 3D space do the same for the second camera and where the rays intersect, well that'll be your 3D marker position. It looked easy enough to do even for someone who's not got a lot of scripting experience like myself and so I've written an add-in to do that triangulation function. So the add-in I've called Triangulate and it installs like any other Blender add-in. You go to User Preferences, Add-ons tab and um, locate the triangulate.py file that you've downloaded and install from file and then you can find that uh, add-in uh, in the animation section or just search for it and enable it with a tick. And once it's installed uh, you can find the triangulate uh, function on the miscellaneous tab of the toolbar just that triangulate button. You can press it any time but it won't do anything useful unless you um, do quite a lot of scene setup. So here's a really quick description of um, what's needed to, um, to be able to use this triangulate add-in. Uh, you need to have filmed an actor um, from at least two different camera positions. You can use as many cameras as you like, it doesn't matter. And uh, they have to be added in as movie clips. Now you can see I've called uh, one here camera one. And in the 3D scene, there has to be an object called camera one, and there's a second movie clip called camera two, and a second object, uh, camera object uh, called camera two. Very important that the position of the two cameras in 3D space exactly matches the location rotation, and it also has to have the same lens data as the real cameras. In this case, camera one has a uh, 54 millimeter focal length, um, 35 mil camera equivalent, and the other camera is actually a Samsung Galaxy phone, and it uh, has a 30 millimeter uh, focal length with uh, for a um, 35 millimeter camera equivalent. Uh, that camera cal calibration isn't easy, and it's um, but it's very important. And the last thing you need is to add empties into your scene. And the empty name has to correspond with the tracking names. In this case, I've got an empty called Spine and a track called Spine for camera one and another track called Spine, the matching track, of course, called Spine in camera two. And the names of these empties trigger the add-on to know which tracks to, um, to use and match up in the movie clips. Uh, and the empties are also the things that receive the position uh, information. So once you've added those empties, you've got all the tracking done, it's just a matter of clicking on that uh, triangulate uh, add-on. And what it does is for every frame, it will go through, look at the track, triangulate the 3D position and add a keyframe onto that empty. So each of those empties that we've put in now has a complete set of keyframes all the way from where you put the start frame to the end frame. And from the limited testing I've done, it's actually been working pretty good. There's very few um, funny things happening. Uh, now that the empties have a position, you should be able to build an armature. I've just done a really quick armature with no respect to constraints or bone rolls, etc. Added a copy location to one bone and a rotation um, constraint to each of the other bones to make them point at the various empties. This is just a very quick demonstration of the intention of how the empties can be used. 
So you can see now the uh, bottom half of the armature is um, roughly tracking the, uh, the body position. This is my first try of the system and uh, I see the camera calibration wasn't ideal as the, um, as the actor moves forwards the um, armature is starting to tilt back as it gets closer to the um, as it gets closer to the cameras but um, I'm sure this is just an issue with the camera calibration. One thing the add-in does is it adds a custom uh, parameter to, uh, to each empty and uh, called error and that way you can use the graph editor to uh, trend the actual error in blender units for each one of the empties. In this case you can see it's actually um, very close to zero where I did the camera calibration and then it quickly uh, drifts off uh, away from that. Now let me quickly just backtrack to a, um, a few suggestions on how to set up the scene uh, with the with the multiple videos so that this uh, add-in uh, can actually be used. So the first thing that's needed is to um, take the raw film from each camera and edit those sections together uh, and make sure they've got the same frame rate and uh, are time synchronized together and while you're at it you might as well trim out any any um, unnecessary stuff so that you end up with two nice neat um, video clips that only contain any calibration film and the acting film and the time synchronization is matched between the two films. Now my first thought on the camera calibration was to actually use the camera tracking functions that are now uh, built so well into Blender and so I had the chair with the markers on it as a calibration object and I moved it over a couple of axes and then tracked all the markers and had Blender do a camera solve. I had to put the right lens in of course to you know as you would normally do with a camera tracking solution and um, and then do the solve for camera motion and that makes it uh, that makes Blender think that the camera is moving around the object but that's fine. Then I scaled the um, between two markers to the uh, correct physical distance and I set one marker as the origin and a second marker as the uh, x-axis and a third as the y-axis. And um, by doing that, that just sets a physical scene and sets a physical position for that, um, for that camera. Having done that, we then uh, convert uh, the constraint to uh, keyframes because we don't really want the camera moving uh, with the object. We just want to pick a frame where the chair is firmly flat on the floor and delete all the other keyframes and that way the camera is just that fixed location in space relative to the uh, calibration object. Then we go to the second camera and repeat the process. So that's all for now. I know this is a really quick rundown, but um, it did include a, um, a bit of documentation with the add-on that I hope explains some of the details not covered in this really quick video. And um, I hope you enjoy.